This episode is sponsored in part by Paperbell. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Six Figure Certified, the podcast. I'm your host, Liv, and we have another guest episode today, which I am very excited about. And if you've been listening to our podcast since like literally the first episode ever, you have heard us do ads for something called Paperbell. And if you are in IGC, you probably used Paperbell. And I have the honor and pleasure of being joined by Paperbell founder, Laura Roeder today. Thank you for being here. Yes, thank you. I'm excited to be here. Laura and I have only met via email, like back and forth for the past couple years at this point. And I've got to say, when your assistant sent me over um, your resume and more information, I was like, oh my gosh, you're so impressive. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Very impressive. I mean, Paperbell is a tool that helps coaches basically sell their coaching packages, taking out a ton of the admin work, which I know is why all of our people love it. But that is only one of many, you know, companies you founded essentially. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. tell us so, a little bit about that. Tell us a little bit about your journey. Yeah. So I've been a full-time entrepreneur for uh, nearly 20 years now. So wow. I started out as a freelance designer um, and then moved into doing online courses. And now I'm on uh, basically my third software business. I had one successful exit, one uh, crashed and burned, and I shut it down. And now I'm on number three, which is doing very well, Paperbell. That's awesome. So you started an online, you had an online course. Well, you, what was your online course? So I used to teach courses about um, online marketing and social media marketing. So I had like uh, when Twitter first came out, you know, when Facebook, like groups and pages first came out, I had courses teaching people how to use those to promote their business. Um, And I had a course called Creating Fame that was all about how to be like famous in your field, like how to be the go-to expert and and what you do. That was kind of like an overall online marketing course. Wow. So how did you go from that into more of the software and uh, entrepreneurship? Yeah. So I was teaching a course about social media marketing uh, that taught people to kind of keep a database of all your social updates so that you can repurpose them, categorize them, use them over and over. And then I met my husband, Chris, and he's like, you know, you could just have software like that does what you're teaching people to do because he's a software developer. And at the time when we created the tool called Meet Edgar, our social media scheduling tool, you know, Buffer already existed, Hootsuite already already existed, and they didn't do any of these things that Meet Edgar does. And having never done software before, I was like, oh, I guess they can't do it. I don't know why they don't do it. It seems really obvious to me that you should repurpose your content. I guess it's like not possible or something. And he's like, no, I can, I can build that. So I'm like, Great. So yeah, that's that's how I got into software. Oh my God, that's such goals. Wow. So were you ever a coach? Sort of. So I'm not like a real, uh, you know, obviously people use the word coach to mean so many things. To me, sure. a kind of pure coach is like someone who's kind of asking questions and reflecting. Um, I don't have any training on that type of coaching, but I have done business coaching as in more the consulting side, like giving people advice. Yeah. So it's something that I've kind of done like in between businesses and between projects and obviously giving people, you know, online marketing advice over the years. Um, and that is how Paperbell came about. Like I had kind of wrapped up Meet Edgar and I was doing some business coaching and I just totally thought Paperbell would have already existed. Like I was setting up my business and I'm like, okay, where's the thing where I can like sell three packages and they pay and they schedule. And I'm like looking around and I'm like, wait, what? What? Mm-hmm. Like <laughs> I thought, I just thought this would be really established. And there were some out there, but like you know, they were either super buggy or like they didn't, you know, they weren't really designed for coaches. So yeah. that's, that's how I discovered kind of the need for Paperbell. Yeah. Well, it's interesting you say that because we have messed around with a lot of different scheduling type tools, mm-hmm. you know, booking services, package mm-hmm. purchase types of things. And first I'll say I've been coaching now for, well, I'm not coaching so much now, but basically in coaching for 10 years. Mm-hmm. And I remember when we first, when I first started, it was like, you send the invoice on PayPal, you get, you email mm-hmm. them with a form. Like it was so, like, you had to piecemeal everything together yeah. from a different yeah. thing. And right. I think even up until we met you and found Paperbell, we were mm-hmm. recommending other things that 
kind of sort of worked, but weren't right. ideal right. for coaches. Yes. Yeah. I mean, so many coaches still do things the kind of old school way, which is just so much work. Like send the invoice, follow up, follow up, follow up. Have they paid the invoice? Like check the PayPal balance. Oh, they didn't get the PayPal. Yeah. Like there's just, there's so much manual work. And then there are tools, um, uh, like HoneyBook or Dubsado are both great tools. They just weren't designed for coaches. They're really designed for like graphic designers or photographers. So yeah. there's just some kind of simple way that coaches work, like selling a package of sessions is, you know, a very common way for a coach to work. And those tools, it's like, you can sort of backwards make them work for that, but they just weren't designed for that. So yeah. Paperbell is just like designed to work perfectly for the way that coaches and consultants work. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's brilliant. And it's like, I feel like my co-founder and I used to say this, that we like shared a brain. I feel like Paper Bell like borrowed every coach's brain in a sense to like create this ideal <laughs> version. And so we've been huge fans for a while. How long, when was Paper Bell founded? It's been almost four years, actually. We started okay. in 2020. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So we've almost been around, been with Paper Bell, I guess, or recommending it since then. But I mean, it's just, we have a whole episode. Actually, you don't even know this because I said to Laura before this, I said, do you listen to our podcast? Okay. First of all, Laura is one of the first people that ever reached out to me about advertising on our podcast. Mm -hmm. We had just launched our podcast when you reached out and I was like, we don't really have any listeners yet. Thank God we do now, everyone. Thanks for being here. But <laughs> she was like, no, I don't listen to it. So she wouldn't know this. But if you do listen, we have a whole episode dedicated to how to use Paper Bell. That like oh, our I'm gonna start sending everyone that. That's amazing. It's, yes, and it's on YouTube. Like she did a whole screen record. It's something that our community kept asking for. Mm. And then honestly, I like didn't record a podcast that week. And I'm like, can you just turn this into a podcast <laughs> episode? So yes, it's really good. It's, I'll send it for you, and we'll link it yeah. in the show notes. But what I found really interesting to you about you too, Laura, is that like after I. Cindy, your assistant sent me some information. I'm like, wow, you have been really in the game for a long time. But the very first thing that she told me, she was like, Laura likes to talk about the impact of mindset. Mm -hmm. And I thought that would be a really interesting topic because even like the fact that you launched Paperbell in 2020, it's like, what did we do in 20? I don't even know what happened in the last four years. Yeah. And you know, but I would love to hear more your take on on mindset and how you know you've built several multi million dollar businesses mm -hmm. at this point and like what role does that play and what advice do you have around that? Yeah, I mean, you know, people always ask me if I'm a coach and like I said, it's like okay, well I've done a little bit of coaching, but I'm really more of a coachy is yeah. who I am. Like I'm someone who's received a lot of coaching and just gotten such tremendous value from coaching. Wow. And the way that I see it is like with the internet. We know that it's not a knowledge gap or a skills gap, right? You can listen yes. to a podcast, like you can watch a video and you can learn anything. I mean, before we recorded, I was telling you, I was watching a bunch of YouTube videos, like about this microphone and how to set <laughs> yes. it up, right? It's like, I don't know anything about microphones, but I can get on YouTube and I can, yeah. I can find out, you know? So it's like, okay, if that's the case, if all the info is out there, then, you know, why is it that we're getting such different results, right, in the different areas of our life? And I think the only thing that you can logically point to is how our mind filters out the information. Because, of yeah. course, you know, what we're all seeing is not just reality in front of us, right? We're seeing our view of it. We're seeing our perspective. We're taking some of, you know, when we watch a video, some of us think, Oh, that sounds easy. I can do that. And some of us think, well, I'll never be able to do this. You know, right. this, this right. I mean, that's so true. That's so true. Yes. So that's that's why I think it's just kind of looking around. Like it has to be that our view of the world, aka mindset, is what's influencing all the actions we take and therefore the results that we get. Yeah, the actions we take or don't take, interestingly. Mm -hmm. I've said this before, like you can Google how to do anything. You need coaching if you know how, but you're not actually following through. Yes. And so it's similar to what you're saying. So do you have any anchor thoughts or things that you like mindsets or mantras? I don't really like mm -hmm. that word, but what are the things that you ground yourself into to kind of keep going and keep creating. Yeah. I mean, one, I definitely believe that if anyone else can do it, I can do it too. 
Yeah. You know, it's like, okay, if there's any human in the world who's ever done this, that yeah. shows me that it's possible. And maybe it takes a lot of practice, right? For me to be an Olympic swimmer would take a whole lot of practice, sure. <laughs> you know, <laughs> big gap between, between me and them. I may not ever get there, but if I practice hard enough, I can, I can make immense progress, right? So I definitely take that as evidence. If someone else can do it, I can do it too. And I think it's just like, I, I try to remind myself that anything I'm afraid of is really just being, or don't want to do or procrastinate on. It's just being uncomfortable, right? It's like, mm. am I willing to be uncomfortable? And it's so funny thinking about the things that we're unwilling to do because they're usually just clicking. You know what yeah, I mean? Oh especially, my gosh, yes. <laughs> especially if it has to do with your business. Like we're running these online businesses. If there's something that you're putting off doing that you're scared to do, it's like, is it actually just hitting keys and writing an email? It's, it's sort of, oh it sort of helps me to break gosh, it down gosh, why is this so <laughs> profound for you to say it like that? It's clicking. It's You're clicking. right. Yeah. Like the tasks yeah. we avoid are really just like, we are not climbing Mount Everest. We're clicking right. buttons. We're clicking. Yes. Okay. So that helps me to remember because it is ridiculous and it sounds ridiculous. And that helps put it in perspective. It's like, when you look at that thing on your to-do list that you've put off for a month, it's like, Okay, that is clicking. I can I can do that. I can do the click. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wow. That's really mind blowing to me because I don't think I don't care what level you're at. Like I think wherever you go, there you are. So if you started out as like kind of wanting to avoid something, like that person is still somewhere in you. And you could mm -hmm. mindset hack your way out of it, but there's gonna be days. There are gonna be days where you just don't wanna do it. And yeah. I have to say, I'm never going to forget that it's just clicking. It, that's really crazy. I'm, I'm glad you found that helpful. Yeah, I, I do. Mean, I'm never, I, it's like one of those things where I just know I won't forget it. And I think it's interesting too, because it goes so nicely with like, if other people can do this, I can do this. Mm -hmm. Like we did an episode a couple weeks ago where it's like people, we hear stories all the time. I really want to do it, but I don't know. I don't know. And I'm like, someone with your idea is making millions of dollars right now. Like, so it's just proof of concept. It's evidence that like, if this is already happening, if you kind of see yourself in someone else, not fully, but like to a degree, instead of being defeated by that, you need to be inspired by that. And yeah. why not me? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I think another kind of, you know, kind of deeper anchor thought that I always find really helpful is just, is remembering that we do always have a choice. Mm. So something like, you know, I have two kids, so I spend a lot of time looking after my kids, right? I could abandon my kids. I choose not to. People wow. do every day, Yeah, you know, walk, walk away from their family, right? And we often feel like we have these things like there can be things in our life that we feel like, oh, this, you know, this is unfair. You know, I have this big responsibility or I have, you know, to take care of my mom who lives with me or whatever. And it's like, you have, you have stepped up and decided to do that. And that's amazing. You made that choice. You yeah. don't, you don't have to do that. And, and things happen in our life, certainly that we can't control. And then we have the choice how to respond to them. If we have, you know, a tragedy, if we have a disability, right, this is life. These things happen. And we always have a choice for how we show up. So I just try to remind myself of that too. Like whenever I'm feeling like, oh, I don't have this option or that option, or, you know, that person has this that I don't have. It's like, I've, I've made my choices in life and I can change them yeah. if I want to. But like, I, I do choose my life, you know, it's, it's deliberate and, and I am happy with it. And it's like, keep, keep checking in and seeing if that's true. You know? Yeah. I mean, I, I thank you for sharing that. And I think it's one of those things that when you say it again, it's like, oh, well, yeah, of course. But it's mm -hmm. also like, you have to remind yourself of that. Mm -hmm. And I like that word deliberate, like your life, you have the choice to make it deliberate or to just kind of be blowing in the wind. And I have right. to say, I just think that the more deliberate a woman is, the more powerful she is in every aspect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I know, you know, obviously Paper Bell is for anyone who needs a service or a, a platform like that to be able to sell. But, you know, at IGC, we, we work with a lot of, I mean, we all women pretty much. Mm -hmm. And I feel like whether it's kids or past experiences or trauma or just kind of lack of 
equity when it comes to funding right. or anything like women tend to have a some different challenges than men when yeah. it comes into yeah. business and I think we have to remember that like no matter what is going on like we still get to choose our path mm-hmm. and I think even seeing that other women have come before us and done that can be a really powerful thing hi it's VP Wright ICC graduate and six figure certified coach If you're wondering what it takes to be in the long haul with building your coaching business and diversifying your income streams through PCC credentialing, getting corporate contracts, and working with other universities and companies as a coach, then I want to invite you to our upcoming workshop, Scale Your Skills, on April 23rd at 8 p.m. This is a great opportunity to learn something new about our additional programs within ITC and also a really fun way to figure out what it takes to have a long-lasting coaching business. I'll be there, of course, and I would love to see you. If you want to register for free, you can use the show notes down below or the description in the YouTube video to register and learn more. See you there. ...thing as well. Absolutely. Now, I've chosen not to do any fundraising for my companies. For software companies, you often raise a lot of money. Some of that, it's like, is my choice. Some of that is due to, it is much harder for women to raise money, unfortunately. Yeah. And it, for me, it's become a combination of like, okay, that's the reality. It's going to be a lot harder. But that reality has also thankfully made me question, is that really something I want? And for me, I want to keep control. I want to keep the freedom. I don't want to have a board to be accountable to, you know, I want to own a hundred percent of my company. And it's just another way that sometimes these things where it's, it's the reality of the world that's sometimes unfortunate. Mm -hmm. We, yeah, we get to look at that reality and decide to be empowered or disempowered by it. Yeah. We are also self-funded and I've often thought and wondered like should we get funding is it it something Mm -hmm. and I think too and you can say this for you also it's like you actually don't need it necessarily Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um and you have proven that through the creation of your companies and also I think you said the sale of one or the exit of one so yeah yeah so me Edgar the social media scheduling tool um I had a very successful exit on that company is entirely self-funded you know, Paperbell is entirely self-funded and it's a pretty substantial size company now. So yeah, again, it's possible. I did it. So I know other people can do it too. I had no idea where this interview was going to go, story of my life, but I'm glad we brought that up because I think sometimes I I joke, but not joke because it's true that I started in like the negative at life because I didn't come from money. I had hundreds of thousands of dollars in student loans and then business loans. And Mm. I'm like, you know, now 10 years later, everything's pretty good. But I think people are, you know, often take themselves out of the game because they don't think they have the funding. But I've said this before, I think, and you kind of started, it sounds like in the not coaching space, but like consulting or online course Mm -hmm. space, like Mm -hmm. it is one of the fastest, fastest and easiest ways for women to get into entrepreneurship. Yes. It isn't a huge startup cost. Yep. Yep. I mean, any kind of like, Freelance service work, which really includes coaching, consulting, is amazing because you get paid instantly, right? Yes. Like all you have to do is find one client and then that client pays you right away. It's not like opening a restaurant where you have to, you know, go to the bank and get a loan for hundreds of thousands of dollars. And anything that you can get paid right away, like then you can stair step your way up. And exactly. Again, going back to choices, like, you know, if you're feeling like, oh, I have this full-time job so I don't have time. It's like, okay, maybe a full-time job is the right choice for you right now. And that's fine. Like maybe you do need that income for your family and you're going to stair step it over time. Again, people just take themselves out of the game entirely, you know, because they have a job or because they have debt. And we always, always have the choice to do it in a way that genuinely works for us. And, and I do think that, you know, taking the conversation back to being women, um, I think it's such a blessing to not have grown up with the idea that your financial value is the only value. Mm -hmm. So I think to put it in very kind of black and white terms, I think our culture tends to teach men that their value to the world is in making money. For women, it can sort of be too far the opposite, right? A lot of women are told kind of that their value is being a mother is a big one. Or like just being pretty. Or being pretty. Exactly. I think that's like the same as being rich. (laughs) Yeah. yeah, for women that their their value is in how they look. And so it's yep. like, okay, I kind of think it's great that I uh, am 
able to proudly say like, yes, I value my company and I value my family and I value my friendships. It's just like, it's like, I've already kind of quote unquote lost, uh, like the business game in a lot of people's point of view, because I'm not willing to absolutely just sacrifice everything for my work. And so it's kind of like, cool, I'm already an outsider. I'm already outside of like these roles that you've created. So I'm, I'm just going to go with it. Like, sure. I don't have a billion dollar company. If that, you know, I haven't raised 50 million. Like if that makes me a failure to you, like, cool, no problem. I'm, I'm very happy with my choices. Yeah. Well, and that let's talk about that too, because you do, it sounds like have a business that works with your lifestyle. Like Mm -hmm. I stalked you on Instagram a little while ago, a couple of days ago, I guess. And I'm like, oh my God. So I have two kids too. And mm-hmm. so obviously I'm like, I love a woman who can manage both, but you're not only just like a mom of two kids. You're, are, are you traveling around the world? Do you just travel full time with your kids? Cause like I we went to Orlando for, for two days and needed a vacation <laughs> after that. So yeah. how does this work? Yeah. So, um, I mean, we always have traveled a lot and then for six months, in 2023, we decided to travel full time okay. uh, for six months, like mostly around Asia, because that's something we had always wanted to do with the kids. So yeah, how old <laughs> were the kids when on. you were doing that? They were four and eight. So you were running a a, a company, traveling around the world with a four year old and an eight year old full time because we were not the only people running the company. Oh, it's like we mm, we have yeah. a team who's keeping the company going, yeah. so that you know we're not the only ones doing it. Wow. So what were the highs and lows of that? Oh man. <laughs> The, the best way I've heard it described, uh, there's a, a writer, uh, Nicole Antoinette, and she calls it type two fun. And type two fun is fun that's a lot more fun looking back on it. So for her, like she does a lot of long distance hiking, long distance walks. That's type two fun. Oh it's like gosh. during it. It's yeah. not always so fun, yeah. but you're so glad that you did it and you look back on it fondly. I think traveling full time with kids <laughs> can be very much type two fun. Like in the middle of it, sometimes it's fun. Sometimes it's total chaos. You know, sometimes you're like, what are we going to do all day today? Yeah. Um, But it was like such an incredible bonding experience for our family, for my kids' relationship with each other. So I think like the, the best part was just like, I mean, we always spend a lot of time together. You know, we're not like a super overscheduled family, but like we were together 20... Basically 24 seven, you know, we didn't have a nanny traveling with us, right? Like it was intense together. Yeah. And well, they must not have been in school, right? Right, right. So we were like kind of, you get to call it unschooling or world schooling, like, you know, I literally thought about it and I feel like this is kind of a sign, but I'm also (laughs) terrified. Terrified. Yeah, (laughs) that's very fair. So it was just like, I feel like we just kind of got to this new level as a family of like how to spend time together. And my kids loved seeing new places and being on trains and being on airplanes and kind of like the the novelty of it all. But honestly, it's just so fun to like look, look back on all these incredible places we went and memories we made together. Yeah. See, and that's one of the wins that it's like, not that you couldn't have that and like a billion dollar business. It's kind of one of those things where I also can see it as a little bit of a trade-off. Like there would be mm-hmm. more responsibility if you had a board of directors and if yeah. you raised, yeah. you know, fifteen million dollars or whatever example, it would look different. Mm-hmm. But you're able to mm-hmm. kind of grow it by keeping full ownership. You can grow it to the level that you want and hire the people to the level that you need to be able to, right. you know, focus on other areas of your life. And I think that just because it's not a multi-billion dollar company. I actually don't, I guess it's all about defining success to you and your family. Exactly. Yeah. And I think, you know, for a solo coaching business, you know, we have customers in Paperbell. Some of them are, you know, earning multiple six-figure income for their family. Some of them are, you know, earning just a few hundred a month, but it's something that they love doing. It's something that they feel very fulfilled, like, just to have a few clients and kind of do it on the side. And there's, it's all good. You know, it's like, it's just what you genuinely want. And it's another trend I see in coaching is that I feel like sometimes just one-on-one coaching gets kind of overlooked, you know, because so many people are talking about scaling up the business and like, that's beautiful if that's what you want to do. 
But also it's like, don't forget that to me, like coaching at the end of the day, the most powerful coaching is that one-on-one, like really deep dive that you can do with your clients. And I, I just hate seeing these things that kind of like disrespect one-on-one coaching, like, oh, you're, you know, hours for dollars or your business isn't scaled or whatever. It's like, no, we, we need, like, thank you. Thank you for your service. One-on-one coaches. Like we need you. I uh, a million percent agree. I mean, we, especially in our level one coach training program, we advise, if not kind of tell the people, like tell our students, like, this is the way to start. Like Mm -hmm. not only I think one-on-one coaching is like a great stepping stone for a coach before you like scale an idea, like please make sure at least one person's life can change from it. (laughs) But it's also like, it gives you so much information and data Mm -hmm. around like what you're really good at and how you can Mm -hmm. actually support people. And I, I do struggle also with this, like, you know, shaming of people for, for wanting Mm -hmm. to have these intimate I touch relationships because we know that coaching in that capacity. And you said yourself, like you have been a highly coached person. Yeah. This is what really works. And it's not just about like having a million followers and selling out thousands of digital courses. I don't even know how you like skip the one-on-one coaching part to get to that unless you're like an influencer first or like a celebrity. Do you know what I mean? Like I, yeah, I don't like skipping that part. I don't like it for excellence in coaching either. Yeah. I mean, I think that's where sometimes people can kind of get into trouble focusing just on the audience building and maybe not having a lot of skills to actually deliver. You know, you can put a course together and you can write some amazing copy for it and people will buy it. But like, did people actually make any changes based on the course? Right. Well, and did you know that only less than 10% of people actually finish a digital course. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we don't even sell digital courses anymore that don't come with a live component. Right. Right. I wouldn't, I have, I have an inbox of digital courses that I've never finished. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I, I think there is, hopefully there is a trend in the industry with, you know, more people moving towards like your business does always including a live component because I think it's kind of like the ethical thing to do now that we know that that's what works. And there is absolutely places for asynchronous information, right? Sure. I was talking about how I watched the video for setting up the microphone. Yeah. I read books all the time, right? Like, yep. of course, there is a place for that. But if you're trying to kind of do a deeper, you know, learning, transformation, training, whatever, I think having some kind of small group or individual or whatever feedback like really is essential. Yeah. I I, I totally agree with that. And I think it's also like one of those things that just um, enhances the longevity of your company. It's like you don't Mm -hmm. want to run a program two or three times to have no people want to give you a testimonial or say anything good about it. And then it's like, you're kind of back at square one or you can never sell it again. Mm-hmm. Or, I mean, mm-hmm. the internet is brutal. I think we've all seen people getting <laughs> taken down, especially in the last few years on like delivering a shitty product. But mm-hmm. nevertheless, I mean, one-on-one coaching is a great way to start. And you talked, well, we kind of talked about like checking in with clients and like making sure that they're having transformation. This is more stuff that's also built into paper bell, right? Like yes. following up. And can you tell Absolutely. us more about that? Because I feel like that's kind of like a hit, not necessarily a hidden feature, but something mm-hmm. that maybe new coaches wouldn't think of. Yeah. So what you can do with paper bell is set up automated um, messages to go along with your coaching sessions. And so you can set up paper bell to say, okay, send this message like an hour before every call and like an hour after every call and just small things like that, like reminding your clients to prepare. Yeah. Um, can really make, you know, reminding your clients, okay, think about, you know, something you want to talk about for the call. Yeah. And it sounds like such a small thing, but having that automated email makes the clients actually think about it. And then everyone gets more value from the session or reminding them after the session, you know, make some notes about how you're feeling now, about what you want to tackle next week, or you can, you know, send midpoint reminders. So like you said, it doesn't sound like much, but the really cool thing is setting that up. You can set it up once in Paperbell and then it always happens. And it's just this little thing that actually does help get results from your clients. So they'll want to keep coaching with you. Yeah. I, I mean, I, those are some of my favorite features, especially from kind of like the ICF, like ethical coaching lens. It's like mm-hmm. managing progress and accountability are huge. So we say like, 
no coaching request, no coaching call. Meaning if someone doesn't say like, here's what I want to walk away from Mm -hmm. the session with, we don't have the call. Like we ask that at the beginning of the call, but it's Mm -hmm. so helpful to have something that goes out, you know, 24 hours before the call or even a couple hours before the call. This is Mm -hmm. something I would ask my clients. I'd be like, do you want the reminder like that morning or the night before? Like, when are you going to actually sit down and, you know, get ready for our call? But being able to build that in and not having, God, I remember when I first started, like I would have calendar dates, like email this client their check-in form, email this (laughs) client. (laughs) I mean, it can be done, but. Yeah. And Paperbell also, you can deliver content along with packages. You know, a lot of coaches do have onboarding content. So when someone first signs up for a package, Paperbell automatically sends them, you know, it can be a form to fill out. It can be like a guide that you want to send them or even uh, you know, an MP3 of like a guided meditation. Some coaches have kind of content like that, but it, it just makes sure that every time your clients get everything you want them to have. And then your clients also have their own client portal. So instead of like you emailing the same file four times, they can log into the client portal and they can find everything you've sent them. So good. You know what I love about everything that you've said is like you, this is how you know you're like a true entrepreneur. Like your company started from gaps that you found in just like mm-hmm. doing what you do and, and working yeah. and living and creating and then saying, I'm going to make this better. Yeah. I think that's yeah. such just a thing for women to know. It's like, you don't necessarily have to like you know, I used to think you had to like invent something that's like never been mm. heard of before. Mm. But really entrepreneurship is often just about making things that are existing even better and doing it with your own unique personality and your own unique take on it. Yeah. Yeah. And once you get it started, it becomes really easy to improve it because you know, anyone who's a Paperbell customer knows like when we release a new feature, I send an email out about it and I'll often say like, you asked for this and we built it. And it's like, we literally, we literally just build what people ask for. Like it is a very simple process. We're like, what are lots of people asking for? And we also um, really encourage people to email us. So, you know, there's like the companies that have like the no reply email oh, address yeah. and you can tell they're like, please God, don't send us a message. You know, as part of our autoresponders, we include a lot of messages, just like asking people little questions about how they're doing and where yeah. they are, because we really want a lot of feedback and and we use that feedback to build the product. So like whatever you see us release, like we we've just been working on all our calendar integrations. We started with only Google Calendar, but now we also have iCal and Outlook and it's like not the most exciting stuff, but yeah, a lot of people emailed us like I want to use Paperbell, but I use Outlook. So we're like, okay, cool. We know what to do. Now yeah. now you can use Outlook with Paperbell. Honestly, it takes out the guess guesswork. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Brilliant. Well, Laura, this has been really great. I'm so glad we actually got to sit down and chat. Like I'm a huge fan of you and your company. Obviously, do you know, I sent Laura a bunch of screenshots from the IGC Facebook group like months ago, because I was like, we get so much positive feedback about our coaches using Paperbell. And I'm like, I would want to know that. So obviously, we're all fans over here. And I'm just so impressed with your story and your parenting. And I want to thank you for being here and sharing all of your wisdom and knowledge with us. Yes. Thank you so much. Awesome. Well, if everyone has not already downloaded Paperbell, the information will be in the show notes. And I'll also make sure we tag that other episode where we had our tech and marketing person literally walk you through exactly how to set up a coaching package on there. So it's like, you can watch it on YouTube, a little free asynchronous learning. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And and you can get started and you can get started for free basically too on Paperbell. So yeah, you can. We love it. Awesome, Laura. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye, everybody. 